There are so many uses for pie crusts, you're not gonna believe it. We are going to make a potato, bacon, and cheddar quiche. It is so delicious. Let's start by preheating our oven to 425 degrees. I am starting with one of these refrigerated pie crusts. I did spray this pie dish. I actually don't know if that's necessary, but you know, it's kind of always a safe bet. So we're gonna roll this out onto the dish here. And I'm not gonna be worried really about, you know, making the edges look really pretty, but if that's something that you're interested in, absolutely feel like you can do that. You can go through and, you know, crimp the edges and make them look all pretty and stuff. My oven is also preheating to 425, so that will be ready to go in just a couple of minutes. Now I'm gonna take a fork and just poke a couple of holes. If you have pie weights, that's something that's great. You can also use dried beans here to kind of weigh the pie down. We're covering this whole thing with aluminum foil. I'm gonna try this in the oven. If I feel like it's not working, that's fine. We're improvising because we don't have as many supplies here. So we're going to just kind of set that down in there. This is gonna go in there for about five minutes. Then we'll remove the foil and it'll go in for another five minutes. I have a bag of these diced hash brown potatoes. We're only gonna be using half of this. I'm gonna put it here into the skillet. We'll heat them up and add all of our spices. I am gonna add a touch of olive oil to these. Now these are gonna take eight to 10 minutes, which is about how long the pie crust is going to take as well. So that works out perfectly. So we're gonna start sauteing these and then I'll probably put a lid on and let it continue cooking. I'm gonna go ahead and make up my egg mixture. We're using four eggs and about a cup of half and half. I might end up adding five eggs. All right, I am gonna go ahead and use five. All right, let's add one cup of half and half to this mixture. I have also done this with some heavy cream. I've done this with milk when I don't have all of the ingredients necessary. Whisk that together. Okay, so now this was in the oven for about five minutes. We're gonna then take the foil off and the weight off, and this is gonna go back in for another five minutes. Okay, I've shifted my heat to medium. We're gonna go ahead and put a lid on this and just let it cook up for about three to four more minutes. All right, now that the pie crust has had its initial bake, we're gonna take the oven down to 350. Let's start assembling that pie crust. Add a layer of potatoes. You guys know if you've been here for a while, I already have some bacon cooked up that we brought with us to the beach place. I'm just gonna take a couple pieces of that. We're gonna crumble them in. So I'm probably gonna do overall about five to six pieces of bacon. We are going to be adding mozzarella cheese, but you can absolutely use whatever kind of cheese you want. You guys know our Kerrygold cheese would be so good in this. A little over a cup. Go ahead and add another layer with the potatoes, bacon, and cheese. Do have a little bit of basil, and I actually think that basil could be really good in this. So I am gonna add just a touch. Now we take that egg mixture that we made, and we're just gonna pour that all over the top. I cover this with foil. I'm gonna spray the top of the foil though to make sure that it doesn't stick. This is gonna go into the oven for about 40 to 50 minutes, but right around the 35 minute mark, I will take the foil off so that the cheese can brown on the top. Our next recipe is kind of a cheater version, maybe of like an empanada. They're gonna be really, really simple and really tasty. And you can serve with so many different side options like guacamole and salsa and sour cream. And you've got a full meal with these. To start off dinner tonight, we are going to cook up some ground beef. All right, I'm adding in some taco seasoning. I can't remember if this one had onions in it or not. So I'm just kind of sifting it through. It doesn't look like it does, so. Good. Okay, I'm gonna roll out my pie crust and get all of this stuff assembled. Okay, so I've got my round cookie cutter here and I'm just gonna get as many of these cut out of this uh, pie crust as I can, but I'm probably gonna end up actually making two of them. And don't forget, you can save the extra pieces for another recipe. 
that you guys will see. I am taking about two tablespoons or so of our filling. And I'm just gonna try and put it as much into the center as possible. There's a couple ways that you could do this. You can fold these over and make them empanada style just like this, which is great. That's a great way to do it. The other option for these is to lay another one on the top and create kind of like a round pie. Top with some cheese, lay this on the top here and then we're going to seal the edges. And I'll go around with a fork and make sure that they are nicely sealed. I'm gonna go around the edge of each one and just seal that by pressing with my fork. I have an egg wash here, which is basically a mixture of one egg and a tablespoon of water. And we're just going to take that egg wash and just go over each one of these. I'm poking a hole in the top of each one with a toothpick. These are gonna go into my oven for about 13 to 15 minutes. My oven is currently preheated to 350 degrees. All right, here are those beef pastries or kind of mock empanadas, if you will. You could easily serve this with something like avocado, guacamole, salsa, things like that. We're actually going with an avocado ranch tonight to go with these, but there's so many different options. We're gonna make a tomato pie, but let's turn it up a bit and make a tomato, feta, and basil pie. We're gonna do another recipe with these rolled pie crusts that you can get. You can obviously make your own. I will have a link in the description box on how to do that. I've already sprayed my little pie dish here. We're just gonna roll this out onto the pie dish. My oven is actually currently preheating to 400. It should be done any second now. And then we're gonna just cook this just a little bit while we prep some of the other ingredients that are going into this. You can scallop the edges and make this look really pretty if you want to. I'm just laying it here into the pie dish. And we're gonna cover it with foil. Because I don't have any pie weights or anything like that, I've been using this right here, which is just another dish. Laying it on top, obviously this is oven safe and that's gonna kind of hold it down. So that's my makeshift pie weight. This is gonna go into the 400 degree preheated oven for about five minutes and then we're gonna prep the rest of the ingredients. Once that's been in there for five minutes, we will remove the foil and bake it for another five minutes. Then we can start assembling everything. I've got a cutting board and a colander. And I'm actually gonna set the colander in the sink. This recipe actually calls for four, sorry, three large tomatoes. We're gonna be using four kind of smaller ones because that's what was available. So we're going to go ahead and slice these. All right, I'm not, I'm not great on the whole measuring the size of slices. So I'll just show you one after I get a slice. How about that? Okay, so it's like a, a good burger slice. That's what you would want. Like a decent size, really good slice. Putting them in the colander and those are just gonna drain off for a bit while we work on the other ingredients. Also, if you are newer here and you don't, know why my kitchen suddenly looks different. We are at my um, husband's family's, well, mother-in-law, my mother-in-law's uh, beach place. Now you can make these slices thinner if that's something that you prefer. I like mine to be a little thicker. Okay, so these are all in a colander and we're just gonna let those drain out. Once they're drained, we also will pat them dry just to make sure they're really nice and drained out. We're gonna dice up some garlic and we're gonna take it over to the stove top and saute it a bit. Okay, so I'm just gonna use one clove of garlic, but you use whatever you would like to use. I wonder if we have a garlic mincer here, let me check. We do not, so I will be doing this the old fashioned way. And before I start dicing this up, I'm actually gonna take the foil off of the pie crust that's in the oven and let that stay in there for about five more minutes. The entire time that we were here, I only needed one clove of garlic, so I didn't wanna go buy one of those things, you know, the minced garlic packet thing, container, containers. So we're gonna saute this in some olive oil. This is gonna take like three minutes at the most, and then we're gonna move on. All right, I did bring some basil from my basil plant at home, and I, you may wanna use more than what I am using. I just brought what I had. Also, I'm starting to lose light. Um, there's a lot of light in here during the day, but right around 5.30 plus, it's been a rainy day. So I'm taking all the leaves off and we're just gonna do a quick chop of these. You can do a much better job than I am if you would like to, but I'm keeping it really simple. 
So this is probably only a fourth cup. Ideally, you would have a half. It depends on how much you like basil. Ideally, you would have a half cup, possibly more. All right, so I do have a bowl here. We're gonna take the uh, sauteed garlic and we're gonna put that into this bowl. It's gonna be our mixing bowl. I am gonna add in the basil. Oh, I also went ahead and drained the tomatoes as best as possible, and then you do wanna pat them off. Even after draining them, you can see how much uh, water is on this paper towel. So you wanna make sure that you get them. They don't need to be perfectly dry, but as dry as possible. To, to my mixing bowl, I'm gonna add about a half cup of mozzarella cheese. We are gonna use some for topping and at the bottom of the crust. So I do wanna reserve, make sure that I reserve some for that. You also need approximately a half cup of mayo. So whatever your favorite mayo is, you guys know what ours is. <laughs> Add that to this right here. And I'm not measuring, this is, you know, ish. Okay, that's just a little preliminary stir here. Now I'm gonna add in some feta cheese. You want about six ounces of feta cheese. I brought mine from home. I'm gonna mix all that in. I do think it needs a touch more mayo, so I'm gonna go ahead and add that. I did add a little bit of salt to the sauteing garlic, but I am gonna add a touch of salt here too, maybe a half teaspoon or so. Okay, so I think we have all of our ingredients ready to go now. Okay, I've got my half-baked pie crust here. Still a little warm. All right, so we are going to take some of our mozzarella cheese and I'm gonna put that at the bottom. And you do not have to mix all this together either. You can do this in layers if that's something that you would prefer. I just feel like I'm just mixing it all together, trying to keep this as easy as possible. You wanna have a good amount of tomatoes because I mean, it's a tomato pie. Now I'm gonna add some of our mixture to the top and just do my very best to spread it around. This is why the layering might be a little easier, but you're gonna get the same taste, so that's a good thing. Now I'm gonna add another layer of tomatoes and the mixture that we made. Last bit of this, just fill in anywhere that we need to. Now I'm gonna take the rest of my mozzarella cheese, which is not very much, and we're just gonna top the whole, we're gonna use the rest of it and just top this. Probably could have been more conservative with the mozzarella cheese on a recipe that I made yesterday and we would have more. Okay, now I'm gonna spray the bottom of my foil so it doesn't stick. Cover this with your foil. I'm gonna let this bake for about 20 minutes with the foil on. Take the foil off and then let it bake for an additional 10 to 15, just judging on the color. I want a nice, Color on the top, adding some brown because of those cheeses. All right, here is that tomato pie. It looks so delicious. I am gonna tell you though, my mom actually made this the other day. She did hers in a layer format and hers looked way better. So don't try and reinvent the wheel. You don't need to mix all the ingredients together. Just do it layered and it's gonna look, it's obviously gonna have the same flavors, but it's gonna look pretty. I did love how this still cut into that perfect piece. As you can see here, you love when you can lift up a piece like that and it all stays together. Let's give it a taste. I've gotta get a bite that has all the flavors in there. Guys, this is delicious. You have to make this. You get all of those cheese flavors, you get the, the hint of tomato and that basil, everything fits together so well. This just like savory pie. It is absolutely delicious. You need to make this one, I'm serious. We are going to make some homemade Pop-Tarts. This is one of those things where you could put whatever type of filling you enjoy. We're gonna go with that brown sugar cinnamon filling. I'm taking my dough and I have a lightly floured surface here. We are going to try and stretch it a bit because this is round dough. We obviously wanna get some rectangles out of this. I'm going to cut the edges so that we get straight lines and make this into a rectangle. I am gonna save these pieces though because we have something else that we are going to do with them. All right, so now I've got a good size rectangle. I'm gonna cut it down the middle long ways. And then we're going to make two cuts so that we will have a total of six. Now I have to roll out my other one and do the exact same thing. So we've got the bottom of the Pop-Tarts there. Now we need to add the tops. For the filling, we are going to take one half cup of brown sugar. 
I'm using about a teaspoon of cinnamon, a tablespoon of flour. I mix this together. I also need to make up an egg wash. So we're gonna do one egg. And to that, we're gonna add two teaspoons of milk and whisk that all together. All right, let's preheat our oven to 350 degrees. I'm going to take some of my egg wash and just brush each one of these with that egg wash. I'm taking our cinnamon sugar mixture and one tablespoon is gonna go in the center of each one of these. Take a fork and kind of spread that around evenly, but not all the way to the edges. We have the tops back here. I do need to brush those with egg wash as well. Egg wash side down. They're going to lay on the ones with the filling. And we're just gonna press the edges together. Now, if you want to make these even prettier, you could go along with your pizza cutter and just cut off any of the little edges. It's obviously not something necessary, but would make them look really even. Now I'm gonna take a fork and crimp the edges. Take a toothpick and just poke a hole in the top of each one. Before these go in the oven, we are gonna brush the tops with egg wash. These are going in the preheated oven that is at 350 degrees for about 20 minutes. I'm gonna use about three fourths of a cup of powdered sugar. We need about a teaspoon of cinnamon one teaspoon of vanilla extract. You guys know I like to use almond extract instead of vanilla though, so you could switch that up if you want. And one tablespoon of milk. My pastries are all the way cooled, so we're gonna go ahead and start drizzling that icing on the top. Pop these into the fridge for just a couple minutes and let that icing harden up. These cinnamon twists are going to be great if you have a leftover pastry sheet or pie crust. Even if you don't and you just wanna make them up, a pie crust would be perfect to make a full serving of this. We've got our leftover pie crust here from the previous recipe. I'm gonna divide this in half, the entire recipe. So I've got one and a half tablespoons of sugar here and about a half teaspoon of cinnamon. We've got one tablespoon of melted butter, and I'm just gonna brush this all over. Sprinkle with that cinnamon sugar. I'm folding this in half. I'm gonna take our pizza cutter and cut into strips. Take the strips and you're just going to twist them. My oven is currently preheated to 350 degrees. These are going in the oven for 20 to 25 minutes. We will just watch them. How cute are these little cinnamon twists? This next recipe is so crazy fast and easy, you're not even gonna believe it. You need a rolled pie crust. You're gonna use one of these for this recipe. Okay. You're gonna roll out your pie crust. And you wanna make sure that it's thawed when you do this because otherwise it's going to, it'll definitely break. This one's thawed enough that I'll be able to press it back together. I've got about three tablespoons of melted butter and we're just going to brush the whole pastry with the melted butter. If you don't have a pastry brush, your sp a spoon will do just fine for this. And again, my oven is preheated to 350 degrees so that it will be ready to go. We're gonna be using the cinnamon and sugar mixture. Liberally sprinkle this all over the pie crust. And I am gonna roll this back up. Look how easy this was, guys. It's like incredibly easy. These are so good with a cup of coffee. It's just like the perfect little cookie. Now, the past few times I've made these, I've cut them into about one inch slices, but I'm gonna go less on these because the thinner they were, we actually really enjoyed some of those. But I just think that these are really meant to kind of be more of a crispy little cookie. And that's why I say they're so good with coffee. And I think the thinner they are, the perfect, the more perfect they are for that. I have some butter left, so we're brushing the tops of each one of these. And then we're gonna sprinkle with cinnamon sugar and it's gonna be so delicious. Obviously some of these are gonna turn out a lot prettier than these little things over here. 
These are gonna go in the oven for in between eight and 10 minutes. I'll watch them and we'll see how they turn out. Well, friends, my microphone was not on during this section and I would love to re-record this for you, but we ate all of these. <laughs> these are so delicious. You guys are gonna love them. They taste like little cinnamon cookies. Love them. So good. Our verse today comes from Psalm 104. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you would like more inspiration in the kitchen, check out the video above. You guys are gonna love this one.